So we're going to take a look at three sections today, uh, and then I'm going to give you a, a program to to catch up with uh, what we've learned today. And the program is going to be what you did based on last Wednesday's class when you created an array and then you did a loop to go through the array to find the highest and you went through a loop to find what the total points were and um, you know and, and displayed some things but before we move on we're going to start out with this first section on copying arrays so if I ever took a statement and I said something like this I'd like array 2 to get the value of array 1 okay if I said array 2 gets the value of array 1 I'd like to copy well, what I've just done is this thing called shallow copying, okay? And what really happens is array two gets a value of array, array one. We are only copying the address. So when I make that statement, array two equals array one, array two's address now gets the value of array's one address. So what I have are two names now pointing to the same memory location both of them point here so if I said what is array sub zero you would tell me one if I said what is array sub two guess what you'd be telling me it's one as well if I went and changed array sub three zero one two three I would make a change here and it would stick so if I said what is array three array one sub three it would stick so this shallow copying basically just copies the address now are there times that we might want to do that yeah do I foresee any situation in which we want to do that no not very often because what will end up happening is I only have one set of numbers and if I use this array name I can manipulate them or if I use this array name I can manipulate them so this is the idea of what's called shallow copying. Now let's go back. What if I want to do deep copying? And this is probably what I want to do, meaning I'd like array two to get all of the values in array one. Well, deep copying says instead of copying the addresses, I want to copy each element. So I'm going to have to do something along the lines of four counter equals zero counter is less than zero one two three four there's five items in there five items counter plus plus and then inside of here if I want to copy what's in array one to array two I'm going to say array sub counter excuse me array two sub counter gets the value of array one sub counter so this time I needed a loop to copy every value from array one into every value from array two. So a lot of what you do with arrays in this chapter seven is you're going to be using loops to go through the number of items. Okay. Now again, why do we use arrays? Well, we use arrays because we want to store large amounts of data and I'm hoping that some of you have already started looking through 7.1 and you see some of the idea of what's going on in there we have a data file filled with numbers you don't know how many numbers there are because that data file could always be changing and one of the first things you have to do is open that data file and continually read a number out of that data file not doing anything with it other than incrementing a counter to keep track of how many there are. Once you've gone through the file, you're going to close it. Now that you know how many items there are, you're going to initialize your array. So we use the appropriate array size. Then you have to reopen the file and read everything into that array. So again, the advantage of an array is I have one variable name that can store a gigantic list of homogeneous data, meaning it's all the same type of data. Okay, any questions on copying arrays? All right, moving on to section 7.3. Now, just like everything 
we've done up to this point, we are able to, in our methods, pass something in and return something. Okay, we've passed integers in, we've passed strings in, we've passed doubles in. Well, today we're gonna look at passing an array in. So when I get ready and I want to get values, okay, I'm going to have an array here that I'm gonna pass in. Now, I can fill the array with this get values if I want. I'm looking at code listing 79. So if you have that or you wanna pull it up, I'm trying to get to mine in my book right now. I had it a moment ago and I lost it. What you see is we are passing in the array, okay? So if I wanna pass an array in, all I need to say is the name because the computer knows from its definition earlier that this is an array of integers. You know, up in my main, I might have something that says int square bracket numbers so that I know this is an array, a memory address that's going to store consecutive integers. So when I call a method, I can pass in just the array name. Now, this array name references the memory address. So when I'm down in, in my method, I'm going to receive it. Uh, here's a, a local name. I'm just going to call it array. I know it's an integer array. It's going to store a bunch of integers. Inside of here, I can fill it. And when I go back, the change sticks. Because remember, all I'm passing back and forth is just the memory address. What happens at the memory address, I don't care. So I can have something where I have the array name going in, changes are made at that memory address, and when it goes back, those things are gonna stick. So when I pass arrays into a method, I just pass the name. Code listing 7.9 has two different examples. One's called get arrays, and one's called show array. Now the show array for code listing 7.9 starts on line 57. Now the good thing about the show array is anytime you think you want to display an array, this is a nice little block of code to cut and paste. It goes in, you don't have to pass the length in because it uses the method array.length. You notice there's no parentheses though. Array.length to find out how long it is. And this is a way to print it out um, to the console. Of course, you might want to change that a little bit so that it prints out into a message box. Okay, but line 57, you know, is, is the start of I have an array coming in and I'm going to display it. So working in chapter seven and doing assignment 7.1, this guy, code listing 7.9, is gonna be a big help. Now, just like any data type where I pass something in, when I have arguments going to my parameter list, and I had ints and doubles and booleans and now arrays, I can also return arrays just like I returned everything else. If you look over here, this is um, in section 7.4, I have public, static, and here's my data type. An array that has values that are doubles. I call get array. So instead of up here where I pass the name in and I change it and send it back, that's all we really need. 7.4 is kind of optional because I can do here and make changes the same as I can create an array and return the values. So if I come up here, you see I have in my main, I declare array of type values. That's a double, holds doubles. And then I have a method called get array. Nothing's being passed in, but what's being returned is values again is the address. What I return down here is some local double array called array that I go through and fill and then I return the address that'll come up and land in values. Okay. 
and again, that's in section seven, six, and we did have a code listing that you had typed in to go along with it. It was 714. Questions? I have a lot of quiet students today. So once again, passing arrays is really all you need to know because I'm passing in the memory address. And then I can go to that memory address and make changes and I can fill the array and come back and it's gonna stick, okay? If I wanted to, I can return a data type that's an array, which is the second option. Questions? Okay, so let's take a look at what I'd like you to do today. So you have a program from the last class that you, uh, you messed around with, you got started with the arrays, but here's what I want you to do today. So you're not thinking so much about coding, you're practicing what we just talked about, passing arrays, returning array. And again, I have you doing a return of array right here. Num array equals get values. Remember, I could have just had get values num array. That's my other option. Instead of having a return type, I can pass the address in, make the changes, and the address comes back. But I'd like you to practice it up here and actually return it. So this is where you're gonna have a method called, called get values, and you're gonna fill it with 10 numbers. Okay, then you're gonna come back and you're gonna pass the array into a method called get the largest. And again, the work inside of these is simple. We're just practicing the logistics of working with arrays and methods. Passing them in, like right here, or returning them, like right here. I want you then to call a second one that does get average. So you're gonna loop through, you're gonna add them all up and then divide by how many there are, and again, that dot length is a way to find out how many items there are inside of that array. And then finally, I want you to pass it to a method called display. Display is going to display the array, num array. It's gonna display the largest and display the average. So we're really working on laying out our main says, hey, go do this, hey, go do that, go do that, and go do that. But we're working with arrays now instead of one of our other primitive data types. Questions? Okay.